Hello and welcome to another video tutorial from Easy Academy. Today's video is going to be about the Confluence Parallel Consumer and it's going to be a multi-part series where in each and every subsequent episode within the series I'll be talking about different topics and concepts within this particular uh, framework of discussing why the Confluent Parallel Consumer was created by Confluent um, when you can use it, how it works, and some of the use cases that it address and solves um, for you. So the Confluent Parallel Consumer is a library that solves a lot of problems that is not handled properly today uh, with the typical consumer group uh, architecture that is available within the Kafka ecosystem. So typically, if you have the need to do parallelism inside your uh, cons uh, consumption of um, events from the uh, Kafka topics, you would have to specify a particular number of partitions. So let's say we want to have uh, 20 concurrent uh, consu consumers pulling data out of Kafka at any given time. We will need to have at least 20 partitions. So if you have something like, let's say, 40 partitions, and you have uh, 20 consumers, those consumers could be part of a group and then each part is, uh, each consumer will get uh, the same number of partitions and they will be able to crunch the data at the same time uh, in, in, in parallel. Sometimes you reach the limit of your uh, cluster and you're not able to scale any higher and <clears throat> you are stuck with only having uh, a fixed number of uh, parallelism within your cons consumption. So this issue is one of the things that the parallel consumer ad addresses because with the parallel consumer, you can have just a single partition and you, you are able to process it in parallel based on different um, techniques and different configurations that are possible with this framework. So with the traditional Kafka consumer group, you would need to evenly distribute the partitions across the consumers within the group and that's how the data will be processed. With this particular framework, that is not um, the, the, the case. Uh, you can have a single partition and still be able to configure a certain number of parallelism and process those things more efficiently using less resources and it is not bottlenecked by how many partitions you are able to uh, create in your Kafka topic. So. That is typically how it works. So it is a new Java library that uh, was created by Confluent and it is released um, with, with an open source license. You can also use it inside your, your code to process um, uh, events from, from the Kafka topic. And it works in multiple ways, which I'm gonna cover shortly. So the first way in which this works is called a key level parallelism. So with this, you can have just a single partition in the topic, but you can specify the number of parallelism you, you want to have. Let's say you want to have 50, you want to have 100 or whatever you need uh, to configure. You, you specify that and then it would retrieve the messages in the sequence in which they were um, uh, put or written to the Kafka topic and then it would uh, distribute them based on keys. So if you have multiple keys, then all the messages from a particular key would go to a particular uh, subset of the processor. So this key level based parallelism is processing messages in, in, in parallel, but all the messages from a particular key are going to a particular thread within the processor. And it's happening in, in you know in sequence so the ordering guarantee is still um, present and you can use this without being limited to how many partitions you have in the traditional way of using the uh, kafka consumer groups if you had one partition at most the number of parallelism you can have will be one but with this one that is not the case you can have any number of partitions you want one partition um, two partitions and you can now specify how many concurrency levels you want and that would process it. But with key level parallelism, you have ordering guarantees 
and the the messages we processed in sequence based on the keys that are present in that message so all the messages from the same key will go to the same processor and it will processed uh, in, in sequence then we have the unordered parallelism this is different because it is not processed based on key um, you just set the parallelism and the messages could be processed in in, uh, in any order but it is not based on lining it up like we have in the in the first scenario based on the keys um, and then the next one is partition level parallelism so this is very similar to the traditional way of doing things with the consumer groups however this one uses much less resources compared to the traditional consumer group so that is just a high level summary of of how this works and if there is a particular uh, concept you would like to see in upcoming videos you would uh, you know just put that as a comment in the comment below and I will be able to take that feedback and I would use that to modify my sequence of uh, episodes or the particular content that I'm showing. In the next video that I'm going to create in this particular series, what I'm going to do is show you how to um, set up your IDE, bring in the dependencies that will provide this particular framework and then use it to test out these three level of, of parallelisms so we'll start with the key level one and then we'll do the unordered one and then possibly in the third video we'll work on the partition level parallelism and then show how that is different from the from the typical consumer groups that we have with the regular libraries for kafka clients and then i will also like in another video to talk about some of the use cases that this particular library is addressing like having some of those large messages that will come in the typical way of processing things and that would stall or that would block the the flow of messages uh, from the consumer perspective so some of the challenges that this particular library is solving i would like to highlight that in subsequent videos but for now this is just a high level introduction and if you have anything that you would like to see please feel free to put it in the comments and i would include that in the upcoming episodes uh, in uh, next week so this is my my channel you can follow me on instagram on twitter uh, on github by uh, using my my handle easy academy um, you can also visit my website easyacademy.com to take a look at some of the content and the courses that i uh, provide um, on massive data processing using open source uh, software. So if you like my channel, please feel free to share it with other people that you think will benefit. Uh, you can also subscribe to the channel and also like this, um, th this video and click on the notification icon so that when subsequent uh, content are, are available, you will be notified immediately and you'll come and take a check it out. So thank you very much for your time. This uh, particular uh, in this particular video and I will see you in the upcoming videos for this series. Thank you.